Harbaugh now heads to the Los Angeles Chargers. He wins everywhere. He wins, period. Justin Herbert, he's a crown jewel. Well, you guys better enjoy this. Quick snap, Herbert to throw. Has a man, touchdown. The fans loved it. You have to love what you're seeing on tape if you're a Chargers fan, especially for the future with Justin Herbert. On the move and throws and touchdown. Oh my God. We're going to be known as world champions. And we're going to do it or die trying. Don't let the powder blues fool you. Who's got it better than that? Well, hey there, everybody. Welcome back to the Charger Chat. I'm your co-host, Will Dog, sitting with my buddy, Kev Huggin' Duggin. What's up, buddy? Oh, not too much. Uh, right now, we are sans Kyle the Coach Duggan. I think he's running a little late uh, with baseball practice with the boys. Baseball. So we'll get him on here as soon as we can. But uh, we've got a hefty episode lined up for you. There's so much going on between last episode and now. There's tons to talk about. Uh, we've also got a fan focus and ask Bolt fam, but let's waste no time. Let's start at the top. It has recently been shown that the new charger players that we have gotten on this team have some new numbers. Everybody's getting their numbers all situated, sorted out. So you can start buying jerseys or whatever the heck you want to do with those numbers. Uh, but what is interesting with some of these numbers is there are pretty fresh and familiar. One of them, like, you know, <laughs> 81's going to look a little different being on a tight end than on just a little bit. <laughs> yeah, Mike Williams, he's such a big part of our you know, receiving core that this is a little weird that they're just like yeah. handing that off to him, but it's all good. Yeah, the uh Chargers tight end Will Disley will be wearing number 81. Uh Chargers running back Gus Edwards is going to be wearing number 4. Do you think Harbaugh had a hand in that? He was like, "Hey, coach, Mind if I wear your number? <laughs> <laughs> That's actually a good point. I didn't even think of that. That's a gen- genius point. I don't know. The, the, everyone wants the low numbers now. And the last yeah. guy that had, uh, and these are all things to, if you guys don't follow him, it's kind of fun. NFL jersey numbers on uh, X or Twitter. They always post the new numbers. Right. But the last person that wore it was Will Greer. So I think it's a fresh number that, you know, looks good. And every, all these running backs and every, everyone wants the low numbers. So mm-hmm. it looks, it's going to be nice. No, it makes sense. Uh, let's see. Hayden Hurst is going to be wearing 88. Taking that from Trey McKitty. That's fine. Take which it. Which is fine. Yeah, improve, take a, it. improve upon it. Uh, linebacker Troy Dye wearing 43. Also weird. I like, I'm also still very fresh. Still yeah. not used to these guys uh, being gone. Let's see. And then there's also Chargers offensive lineman Bradley Bozeman uh, is going to be wearing number 75 for the nice. Chargers. I don't know who's had 75 previously. Austin Pleasance. Okay. So this is a fresh start for 75. We'll get it rolling. Yeah. Let's see what it can do. Yeah. Let's take her her out for a drive. Let's see. Just around the block. Yeah. Around the cul-de-sac, maybe. (laughs) Yeah. Um, So, yeah. So numbers are already coming out, and uh, there's also a new Charger. Uh, The Chargers are making a key secondary addition agreeing to terms on a one-year deal with former Titans free agent, cornerback Christian Fulton, sources say chance to go out and earn an even bigger payday next year yeah so he was a you know second round pick for the titans um had a lot of promise came out of uh lsu like supposed to be a stud drafted Mm. really high um and he's just the injury bug so the goal Mm. the hope the what i am praying for is the ben herbert magic just give him the touch just dust it on all of them get all these guys that you know have never been able to stay healthy make them healthy (laughs) keep them fresh um and because he's on a it's a one-year deal so he's just proven it so it's a lot lot to prove for him and he's got all the you know all the skills needed to be a successful cornerback in the league Mm -hmm. he just hasn't been able to stay on the field so let's let's see see what he can do yeah at the very least he's very solid depth um and yeah, hopefully Ben Herbert just, you know, brushes the back of his hand against his cheek and cures him of all his ailments. It's like, dude, that's really, ailments. really creepy. Shh. He's like, Shh, just trust the process. <laughs> Shh. Don't worry. Just let it happen. Yeah. Trust the process. <laughs> um, and he's wearing number 26 for the Titans, and that's Asante Samuel Jr. So what number will uh, Christian Fulton have on the Chargers? Put it down in the comments. <laughs> only, only time will tell. <laughs> Um, but in, and with uh, gaining some new players, we also lost a couple of players. Uh, the Bills are signing center Will Clapp. We hardly knew ye. 
uh, as well as a defensive lineman Austin Johnson also going to the Bills. It's kind of weird. They're going in bunches. Like so, the Bills have two, mm-hmm. and then um, the Bears have three. So we're getting yeah. little chunks. So yeah, and the Commanders, have yeah, Eckler, and don't they have somebody else? You're probably right. I'm trying to remember. I feel like there was another guy that went to the Commanders now, and I can't think of it. But yeah, yeah, it is interesting that. Uh, that they are going in benches. So we won't be seeing those guys next year. Uh, and then uh, there was an interesting little tidbit on Austin Eckler. Uh, this comes from Alex uh, Insdorf over at our friend from the other podcast, The Guilty is Charged. Uh, Commander's running back Austin Eckler on the Chargers' interest in free agency, uh, saying the Chargers came to me and kind of told me what they were looking at in the running back position, and it wasn't what I can offer as a player. There was a misalignment. Yeah, they're interested, but are you really? If all else fails, bring Austin back in type of thing, because I don't want to be in that scenario. If that's your philosophy and what you're telling me, and I don't fit that, I got to look somewhere else. That's pretty intense. That's wow. that's cool that the uh, leadership over at the Chargers are like, hey, we're not going to beat around the bush. You're not the prototypical running back we're looking for. Right. You know, so <laughs> it's pretty harsh. It's a pretty harsh thing to yeah. say. We'd like to have you back, but you're really not what we're looking for. Yeah, and but there's no need to sugarcoat it or try to beat around the bush or anything like that. It's more just like, look, this is the type of running back we want. And is that what you can offer? No? Okay, well then, this is not a fit anymore. Yeah. And, um, I mean, he's just being probably more vocal about it than everybody else leaving. Because he's always been. He's, this is, this is not new for, uh, for Mr. Eckler. He just, he spits it out when he gets it. So, it's, it's very insightful about our GM and, you know, what our staff's all about. It's a no-nonsense approach and this is what we are and... Let's just cut to the chase here. Let's, yeah, let's be honest with each other. I'll be honest with you if you'll be honest with me. Let's not waste each other's time. This isn't going to work, okay? Yeah, it's not, it's not going to happen. No. Uh, Mike Davis, that's the guy who I was trying to think of that went to... Oh, that's right. Commanders. Well, well, bunches. (laughs) (laughs) Um, and then uh, there was the recent owners meeting in Orlando on Monday that included both the owners, the GMs, the coaches, and everybody got their photo taken sans a couple of coaches that uh, decided not to show up. Uh, but yeah, they had their big photo with all of them. Just It looks like an awkward <laughs> high school. No one really wants to be around each other. They're yeah. all super competitive guys. They're like, this is really weird. As soon as they're like, photos done, they all just scatter to the wind. Yeah. Yeah, so, except for the except for the brothers Harbaugh, they're sitting right next to each right, other yeah, in this photo, of course. and it's pretty sweet. They're soaking it up because yeah. he's got it better than them. Nobody, exactly. Yeah. Um, let's see. Uh, but during that, uh, they interviewed Jim Harbaugh uh, at this meeting, and there are a ton of interesting little tidbits that came out of this interview. I really can't wait to see more interviews from Jim Harbaugh, especially I'm, like this is the tip the of the iceberg. On. Yeah, exactly. Um, one of the things he talked about was the Keenan Allen trade, uh, saying everybody does what's best for them. Uh, it's just very transparent. I've asked where you love the NFL. Uh, it's the business part of it and everybody does what's in their best interests. And Keenan, he made 23 million a year and now he will play in Chicago. Who's got it better? I'm happy for Keenan. (laughs) It's just he's he's very much the personification of yeah. our podcast, the shamelessly positive. Like, good for him. Yeah, great. He's I love it. Twenty three million playing in Chicago. Who's got it's it awesome. better? No, nobody. <laughs> uh, he also said the NFL has a business side to it, and guys, they do what's best for them. Uh, you do what's best for your family. You do what's best for yourself professionally and personally, and everybody understands that. There was definitely like more stuff came out since the last time we talked, where it was like. G- our GM said that they made a few offers and there was a back and forth. And then Austin, uh, I'm sorry, Keenan's wife said, no, there wasn't like, she jumped in the mix. I was like, okay, this is on like a trajectory of getting awkward and weird. Cause mm-hmm. I want him to come back and retire a, a, a charger. So oh, yeah. like, let's not do this. Let's stop. Let's stop this right now. Yeah, let's get ahead of, the of this. Kids, yeah. Please. Let's not do this. <laughs> the kids. Exactly. I was like, let's just, this isn't necessary. Like, um, so it is what it is. It's in the past. I think each, each day I get more removed from it. It gets easier. 
Yeah. Bad time heals all wounds and, and that would be no exception. Um, one of the other things that uh, he talked about was Justin Herbert saying, I've been talking to Justin every chance I get any reason that I get to call Justin just to check on how things are going on. Uh, the ranch up in Oregon. I love hearing stories about that. Talking about cadence, putting in the schemes, offense and defense. And Shane day has had multiple conversations with him. Justin's been in, uh, he's gotten a few workouts in. I think that's hitting him really good. Uh, just that interaction, you know, I like just hearing how his day is going. <laughs> Justin, uh, so what's going on? <laughs> if you hear him say this, it's to- it sounds totally normal. But writing it down and then you saying it, it sounds like kind of a stalkery girlfriend energy. Well, like, I just want to hear how his day is going. I just yeah. like call me back. <laughs> you know, <laughs> hey. What you do? <laughs> That's what I imagine. Our fuck laying on his bed, feet what kicking behind do? him. What you doing? And then his RV just like drawing up plays. Oh, uh, you know, hanging out by the beach. Miss you. <laughs> Oh, I love it so much. Hey, but well, I he miss could. you more. <laughs> <laughs> oh God! But the uh, everyone I've seen a few things on Twitter of people saying, you know, you know, what if they trade Justin to get? Oh, Christ! <laughs> if anything, just shut up and listen to this. Just, just, <laughs> just, just shut up. Just sh- shut, shut, sh- shut, shut up. up, shut up. Just shut um, up. For that's, a not, that's not happening. Yeah, that's there's no way that that's happening. But I love his his affection for our quarterback the same way that if I could have his number, I'd want to check in and see how his oh, yeah. day is going. Yeah, like, what are you, you doing fe- up at the ranch? <laughs> what you doing today? You milk any cows lately? <laughs> yeah. Got to work on that arm strength. <laughs> <laughs> um. So, yeah, that was pretty funny. Uh, he also talked about his plan for the receiver's room, saying, I'm really excited about Quinton, his opportunity, Josh Palmer, Darius, and then it's not even April yet. We've got the draft coming and free agency too. free agency lasts before the draft, after the draft right now, just couldn't be more excited about getting the players in the building. Yeah. So it's like April 2nd is when players start showing up and he's just, I feel, it's feeling like he's just kind of like sitting by the front door waiting for like the dogs to come home. And he's just like, watch. yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's like, when, when, are, when are my dogs getting home? Uh, they've been out <laughs> roaming the ranch a little too long. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's really cool. And I, did you see some of the uh, the photos of the new facility? Like the stuff's going up. It looks. Oh it's getting, yeah, it's getting real. It's oh, getting yeah. finished. It's all coming together. Baby. It's all coming together. <laughs> I'm loving it. Um, and I love that he's excited about Quentin. I mean, obviously, what is he going to say? He's not going to be like, yeah, Quentin sucks, but everybody else is cool. Like, I I just like hearing that. Like, he's not giving up on you know a player. And again, I don't expect him to say that in an interview like this, but. I don't know. I just like that he's recognizing him. And the one thing that people are just, they're just really counting Quentin out 100% with their evaluations of where, what we need to do. Um, Let's, let's, I want to give him a chance. I want to see what he's got. And, and, and Darius Davis, people aren't even talking about him as a wide receiver because we barely used him. It's like our wide receiver room is completely depleted. It's not. We got a couple guys that's not full. Right. And like you said, there's still the draft. There's still free agency. There's plenty of time, plenty, plenty of time for that wide receiver room to look totally different going into the season. Um, Talking about the edge rushers. I said, thrilled to be coaching Khalil Mack. Uh, You watch what Khalil did, uh, the kind of year he had playing every game. Joey was having a better year than Khalil, though, that uh, through that stretch until he got hurt. I tell you guys, really thrilled for Jesse Minter and what Khalil Mack and Joey Bosa and Thule are going to be doing in this system. Uh, Really excited about that. Can't wait to see uh, that come to life starting April 2nd. April 2nd is his date, man. So what is April 2nd? Is that OTAs? That's when uh, voluntary. Voluntary. Yeah, that that stuff comes up. Yeah. Okay. It's the it's Ben Herbert time, baby. It's, yeah, time for everybody. Everybody, sit down, shut up. This is Ben Herbert right here. Buckle up, give him your cups. phone number, personal yeah. numbers. <laughs> yeah, anything hurts, you call Ben. <laughs> call Ben. Not not I'm Herbert. i Ben Herbert. Anything. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then talking about the offensive line says uh, Rashawn really good. Excited about Zion. Bradley Bozeman signed him. Salier Pipkins. I really like McFadden too. 
Uh, just can't wait to get in the room, get in the weight room, get on the field and coach guys and be around them and build that group. And then talking about uh, McFadden saying he's got versatility, he's got the athleticism, he's got the feet, he's got the intelligence and intangibles, I've been told. Uh, so there's all kinds of possibilities that you think about and anticipate. But hey, we all got to get together here in the same room and au natural, we'll go about it. <laughs> <laughs> he's like they posted a 35 minute interview he's just sitting at a table talking and he's captivating oh like yeah. it, it's better than tv it's I like know. that's why i need more <laughs> i know i need i need those daily press conferences you know what i mean those are my yeah. i cannot wait for those yeah and, and i mean that's the other thing i'm i'm interested in to see what happens going into this season you know, he's not counting out Pipkins and the way that he talks about McFadden is actually kind of exciting because yeah. we didn't see much of McFadden at all last year. So, you know, some of the things, some of the issues that I think some of these players have, you know, it, it does come down to coaching. And if you've got a coach, if you got the coaching staff that we had last year and previous years from that, you, you saw the result that you get with players that need more coaching. And getting getting an entire new coaching staff, I'm really curious to see if some of these players actually kind of turn around or kind of become these shined up diamonds that are like, whoa, well, a lot of all my life. A lot of them are going to be used differently, man. It's just yeah. a fact, you know, different offense, you know, different defense. Yeah. So, you know, we'll see how, you know, you get coaches always coming in like we're going to cope ma maximize this for the players we want the players to be comfortable in it well let's see who's who's better at it we had we just had a coach that came in and said that and we'll see what this this coaching staff can do with that yeah. same mentality who coaches better than us nobody nobody <laughs> um and then he started uh this was also interesting because everybody's very anticipating about the draft everybody's speculating five's the, becoming my least favorite number to like everyone it's no a very dramatic to, number right now it is very dramatic um he said uh we'll see how it plays out <laughs> that's the end of it right there we'll see yeah. how it plays out cut insightful uh no he said uh there's going to be a great player at five in some ways there's talk of four quarterbacks going in the first four picks, where if that happens, then that pick really becomes like the number one pick in the draft. If four quarterbacks go in the first four picks, that's not like the fifth pick anymore. That's like the number one pick of the draft for teams that have a great quarterback already. If it comes around to us and we're in on the clock at number five, we know we got a great player that's going to be there for us. I haven't determined who that is going to be, but it's an exciting pick. Whoa. <laughs> he said a lot without saying anything other than the fact that he's like, I think he's still like playing 3D chess mm -hmm. where he is. He's pumping up his his former quarterback so much. You know, I, he went to his pro day talking him up. Oh, yeah. I think he's willing him into those first four picks of somebody's going to trade up for him um, just to set himself up for even greater success. Yeah. Like it's it, it's I don't know. I, I like how he's navigating this. It's pretty clever. It, it's extremely clever because that still doesn't really indicate what they're going to do. Not even a little bit. I haven't no. determined what I'm doing yet, but I yeah. like what I could be doing. Yeah, but to know that the number five essentially is the number one pick for teams that don't need a quarterback, hmm. what would you do? You, you want to trade up? And we're gonna. If you want to trade up with us, it's basically like the first round pick. It's the first. It's the first pick. But you're not. You don't have to pay first round pick prices. No, you're what I'm at, saying. What I'm saying. Jim Harbaugh's <laughs> discount. <laughs> Fifth overall pick warehouse. <laughs> but what I'm saying is like he they're going to charge like a first round pick because oh, yeah. it's the first player. That's what I'm saying. It's like I want one of these wide receivers, but oh, somebody's gonna be willing to pay some money mm -hmm. for one of these guys. So it's or just draft capital. Or it's it'd be interesting to see what they do. I'm I'm really on the fence about who what they do there, but it's going to be interesting nonetheless. Oh yeah. It's going to be exciting. And the fact that he's talking it up in such a dramatic fashion is really just enticing. And I'm just on the edge of my seat from now until April 24th, whenever the heck the freaking draft comes, because oh, God, I can't come soon I'm enough. just going to be hovering in the air. I'm on the edge of my seat that much. Yeah. Um, and then uh, lastly, I'm living in an RV by the beach. Confirmed. Confirmed. Uh, offensive coordinator Greg Roman also apparently has an RV. 
and they are living within 100 feet of each other. <laughs> I like this. What? <laughs> <laughs> Within a hundred feet, does that mean like oh I couldn't get the spot next to Jim or I need a hundred feet of I think, space, I th- Greg? You go over there. Could you imagine <laughs> the balls of the RV to park between the two of them? I think <laughs> whoever it is, th- there's like a no no man's land where this is our space for our creative energy. Mm-hmm. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? And don't don't pull in here, Bob or Karen or whoever your name is. Don't you be coming yeah. in here? Um. So Harbaugh said he's got a better RV, uh, <laughs> referring to Greg Roman. Uh, G. Rome's got a really, really good RV. Great nickname, by the way. G- yeah, G. Rome is what we're doing for that one. <laughs> uh, well, I'm not as fancy, Harbaugh said. Uh, my Thor motor coach it hits me just right. <laughs> <laughs> It's been awesome. It's been really good. Uh, I got to go back there and there's just some good time to think. It's been great. All that's coming to an end, happily coming to an end because my family is coming to California. They're all here on this trip and we're all going to California together. So we'll be moving into our rental house. That's even better to me. So it was a fleeting moment. Um, He (laughs) channeled, he became a Californian like that. (laughs) Living on the beach. I just love that. It hit me just right. It hit me just right. This dude is a quote machine. Uh, it's so good. Um, yeah. So obviously there's more to the interviews. They talk about a bunch of things, but those are really just the tidbits. But go check really, it out. It's on chargers.com and on the Chargers YouTube page. It's in yes. their, its entirety. If you have time, just go listen to it. Definitely go check it out. It just, it makes me excited now for every bit of off season content that is going to be coming our way via, uh, the social media team and through the lips of Jim Harbaugh. Can't wait. <laughs> I cannot wait. So, uh, what else I can't wait for is for you to go over to our Patreon, patreon.com slash charger chat. Check out all the funny, silly videos over there. I posted a doozy of a behind the scenes. Uh, it was, uh, yeah, it's a real doozer. It was a squeaker, if you believe it. Uh, <laughs> if you believe it, was a that. real squeaker of a good time. But uh, we, hey, we've also got a new uh, Patreon member to shout out. Uh, it's Susie. Now, Susie, I believe, if I remember correctly, Susie has been on here before, and I pronounced her last and, name wrong. Yeah, and we met her at the game too. Her, yes. Yeah. So I believe, I believe it's McLeod. Susie McLeod. Welcome to the party, man. Welcome to the party, oh, Susie. Susie. Ah, thank you for joining, Susie. Can't wait to uh, see it. you on those Zoom hangouts. But uh, if you don't want to go over to patreon.com slash charger chat, that's totally fine. You can go on over to our regular website, chargerchat.com. Check out all the cool stuff we got over there. T-shirts, hoodies, and stickers. You can chat it up with other Charger Chat tiers in the member section and ask questions. And ask both fans to go check out chargerchat.com. All right, folks. Well, now it's time to go on to the next segment. Uh, It's time to bring somebody into focus, and that somebody is a fan by the name of Anthony Tony Francis. Let's go. All right, guys. We are back with another fan focus, and we are super lucky to have Tony from San Diego. What is going on, my brother? Uh, What's up, Kevin? How you doing? I'm good, man. I'm good. I'm glad to have you on and uh, learn a little bit more about your fandom and Man, we got to talk about some stuff. Lots, a lot's been going on for our Chargers the last couple of weeks. So, I want to get your opinion. But before we get into any of that, we'll start off the way we usually do. How did you become a Charger fan? Well, I, uh, I guess I was pretty much born into it. You know, I was uh, when I was five years. I was, I was born in Modesto, California, kind of in the Central Coast. But uh, I moved to San Diego when I was four. And uh, the only thing I can ever remember watching on TV is the Chargers my whole life. So it's like my dad watched it, my brother-in-law, my sister. It's just, I was kind of born into this uh, this fandom of being a Charger fan. I love it. It's, uh... now, it's been crazy. It's been fun. It's been really sad at times. It's been really intense and really uh, joyful at times. So I'm just here for it, riding this roller coaster. Well, and you have good perspective then, man. Like, new head coach, Harbaugh, a lot of new stuff going on. <laughs> like, a lot of new stuff. You know, we Keenan Allen, no longer a Charger. Never thought I would ever say that. Um, so what are your kind of general thoughts on kind of where the team is and our, your excitement level for what's going to happen? So, I the minute that uh, 
Staley got let go, I was like, oh my God, this could be the chance for something big. And we were all thinking Harbaugh, Harbaugh, Harbaugh. And then just, but I wasn't sure it was going to happen, right? Because you never know, like, this, like there was these rumors that the Spanos family could not pull the trigger. They could, they could get somebody else. And just the day that we, I remember I was like, well, at a, a mall up here in the Bay Area where I live now. And like the, my phone just goes off like karma. And I just start freaking out in the mall. Man. <laughs> I just love start, it. like jumping up and down. I'm sure people thought I was a psycho. And it was like, I was like, this is it, man. This, this is going to, Who's got it better than us? Like, I just thought Nobody. of it immediately in my head. I yeah. love it, dude. And so, uh, but where I'm at, though, like, right? So I, we lose Mike Will, you know, and then Keenan goes, and it sucks, right? That sucks. But, like, trust the process. I keep saying that over and over and over in my head that Jim Harbaugh can do no wrong today. <laughs> and just, like, he, he hasn't coached a game yet. You know, yeah. so like, let's see how the season goes before we start, like, even think about critiquing him for getting rid of Keenan or, you know, he's he's not a wide receiver. guy; He's a run first. guy. Yeah, no, it's going to be interesting to see what happens with that, because it's hard to criticize people, you know, when we're talking about the draft and who we're going to take. There's a little bit of like still a little bit of animosity from the Telesco years of like, if you don't do this, then we're not going to be anything, but it's a new, new GM, new head coach. It's a new mindset that we're not used to. We are so locked into being a charger fan for how long, however long you've been one drafts. Haven't really gone our way in the past. Like we're, we're first couple rounds. We hit later couple rounds. We don't usually hit. So what are your kind of thoughts on, you know, the draft, and and the fifth pick, which is a unique one, because apparently the more I hear about it, there's a four quarterbacks could go ahead of us. And then we got sitting pretty with whoever we want. Well, so there's what there's what I want to happen. And then there's what I think will happen. OK, right? let's start with let's start with one. What do you what, what do you want to happen? What do I want to happen? I want us to get Marvin Harrison Jr. or Malik Neighbors. Uh, with the fifth pick. I just I like that to me sounds like just a weapon that Herbert can just unleash to that could be crazy. What do I think will happen? Not that. Right. I think, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, you know, like I talk to people I'm like, oh, we're for sure we're gonna get neighbors, we're gonna get Marvin Harrison and Roma Dunze. And I'm just like, okay, yeah, like I really, really, really want that to happen, but I just know hard luck. And, and I know his track record and either I think he's going to trade back and we're going to get an offensive lineman and uh, in a perfect world, we get Brock Bowers and an offensive lineman, like in the first round of the first two, but I take that. I can, yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if we got an offensive lineman and then, you know, Blake Corum in round two. Got it. Well, I think I think a lot of fans too need to remember, like we we have a, a coach that went and probably did visits with all a lot of the guys that are going into the draft. Like his insights and what he what he knows about a lot of these players is pr- pretty unmatched in terms of the head coaches and the staffs that are in the league right now. So who's to say that we don't? There's a gym in the second third round that none of us are talking about because we don't have you know the analysis from ESPN and NFL Network to kind of help lead us to that direction. Who's to say that there isn't some like ace up his sleeve somewhere a little later in the draft, we're all going to be like, oh God, that, that's the best pick of all time. Well, I mean, wasn't, wasn't Keenan a third round pick? Sure as hell was. Yeah. And look how well he turned out. So exactly, exactly, dude. Yeah. Like our first round. Our, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So yeah, you're, you're a hundred percent, right. You're dead on that. Uh, Harbaugh knows the college players probably better than any other NFL head coach out there. And he's going to put that to the test. And he's real. I, I mean, we, what do we have? Nine picks already. If we trade back, we'll be at 10, maybe yeah. 11, you know, like that's, that's huge. Yeah. Well, and with your Marvin Harrison thought, like, you know, Jesse Minter just recently came out and was talking about, not recently, but like there was an article about him preparing for Ohio State um, during last season. Here's like Marvin Harrison's like a generational talent. We had like our game plan is just to stop him. So, something to be said for your defensive coordinator and who the, he was worried about stopping. If he could land on the chargers, there's something to be said for that as well. Well, I heard coach money say on this most recent uh, podcast, uh, that he was talking about the, um, the Ravens in the past have been uh, best available player type. Yeah. Team. 
And so that was the one thing he left us all with. Matt Money Smith, he's like, maybe, you know, for all of us, for all you guys who want uh, neighbors or Marvin Harrison Jr., just think about that. The Ravens in the past have been a best available player type team. And if Fortis is thinking that, then there's that outside chance that happens. No, for sure, man. And it's exciting. We'll know, we'll know soon, sooner rather than later. So that's uh, something to be excited for. <laughs> it's coming. It, these weeks could not go by. There's the snail. It's just so slow. I just, I need to know who our team is. I need to know who we're drafting. I can't keep doing mock drafts. My head's going to explode. Hey, are you, are you coming down to LA for the draft? I wish. I'm going to be out of town. I'm going to be out of country for work. It's something I want more than anything. But, um, Training camp. That's my my goal okay. at the new the new facility training camp. That's what I'm aiming for. Um, well, then that, that's where I'll see you again. Because I still yeah. remember the, the Packers game, man. That's where we met. Yeah, that was, a, yeah. That that was, was awesome. Cool. Wish we'd have pulled that one out. And we saw we saw Keenan's last touchdown as a Charger at that oh, game. Yeah. Isn't that wild to think? We that were there the, for that. That was the beginning of, of Jordan Luck. That was the we we turned we Ign- made <laughs> we ignited Luck. his that flame. Helped Jordan Love become <laughs> Yeah, it's f- hilarious. Um, and I want to talk to you. You're wearing it. Dire Bull Club, we're members. You know, tell us a little bit about your chapter and what you guys got going up there or any, anything exciting. Yeah, so Die Hard Bull Club Bay Area. I actually, um, I even put it on the back of the hat, the Bay Area on the back. Nice. The Love it. Uh, um, so, yeah, I mean, I've only been a part of this chapter about a year now. Like, I, the, it's been too many years where I've been the only one of my friend group that was a Chargers fan in the group of like in a room watching the Chargers. And like, I'm like, there's got to be more Chargers fans up in the Bay Area, right? So I started scouring the internet and I found the Die Hard Bowl Club to being in the season. And I was like, dude, this is awesome. And yeah. so like, you know, I'm, I'm in the, I'm in the club now and we just like, it's been great, man. I've been going to the uh, tailgate. So I'm a season ticket holder as well. So I can fly down from the Bay Area for every home game. And Sweet. what's been game changing is Thunder Alley. Like we get we get right there. Me, my brother in law, my sister who live down there. Like I fly in, they take me from the airport. We get to we get to uh, uh, SoFi at like six a.m. to line up. You're starting and early. Like, yeah, oh yeah, it's dark and it's cold. By the time we get there to line up, and we just and as soon as it opens up, we go in, we set up. Like I've never actually I've been a season ticket holder now at SoFi ever since, since the existence, and like. This was the first year that we've tailgated right on Thunder Alley. And awesome. Thunder Alley is like next level. I've been to other stadiums and other in other cities. There's nothing like Thunder Alley I've seen at any other uh, football team. Yeah. Like it's so fun. Like, you're, you're just spread out, right? In other stadiums. Like you're spread out. There's team, this guy, there's like a group of 15, 20 people that always tailgate here. It's like Thunder Alley, there's a group of like 500 people that always tailgate in the same spot. And yeah. it's just like they've got the speed. Speakers lined up, and it's like a giant club, and it's like, oh my god, like it is cool. It's, Sometimes it's Sean the, Merriman will come cruising by. You'd be, you'd be surprised who shows up, man. It's just it's a very family atmosphere. It's just like you go there, people like give you hugs, like, oh well, man, good to see you. And I hadn't seen them in you know eight months since the last game, seven months or whatever. And it's like time never, like nothing changed. It was like, all right, we're good to see you again. We're back. Let's do this. It's gonna be fun. So it's nothing yeah. quite like Thunder Alley in the club. Dude, it is like, and that's been the game changer. So I've been a big Chargers fan my whole life, but like finding the club and finding like just another community within that's, that's like, we do stuff outside of the club. Like we get together, we hang out. We do things like, that's the stuff, like the community, man, that keeps you together. Yeah, for sure. And we love it. Dire Bowl Club, they're doing awesome stuff. So if you guys, same same position Tony's in and you're listening to this and want to go check it out, I'd highly recommend it because it's a great community of people to be with. And uh, let's get you out of here on this, Tony. Um, best Charger memory. You've been a fan for a long time. What's your, be- your best Charger memory? My best Charger memory, it started off as like, and so it was, a, it, it was the year after the Seattle Seahawks won the Super Bowl. And I think we played them in September at Qualcomm. And it was mm-hmm. probably like a hundred, like 80, maybe 90 degrees in the parking lot. Like, yeah. and we're sitting there and we're tailgating and we go in and just, I'm, I think I'm sitting probably at like 10 yard line on the field, maybe like 15 rows up. It is so hot that I at one point had never stopped sweating. Like my, my Jersey was just completely like, it started off baby blue. It probably was dark blue by the end of the <laughs> yeah, Nice. Color rush. Fucking catch 
three touchdowns. Yeah. And at, we just hung out and we, and, and we like, we just destroyed the Seattle Seahawks, the defending Super Bowl champs that just crushed Peyton Manning. Yeah. So for us to get in there on like week two, I think, and just and beat them like significantly was like that was that was a moment and then i ended up staying till the end and one of the chargers uh players i forget who it was he came and just threw me his gloves that's cool uh, it was like a backup so i don't remember but i was like oh, you know so i still have those gloves today like that's awesome. they were that's worn, awesome. but yeah <laughs> That's awesome. And more memories to come at SoFi and Thunder Alley and all that stuff, man. Excited to run into you at a game. We're definitely going to the home opener. So hopefully oh, we'll, we'll see you there. We'll see you there, dude. We'll we'll uh do it up in Thunder Alley and have a good time. Yeah. And shout out to the uh Diehard Bowl Club. We're having a draft party uh for the Thursday, first day of the draft. Um in I think it's it's in Orange County. I believe it's like at the Dave and Busters or something. It's gonna be fun. Definitely. We'll uh, we'll share that with uh, everybody if you want to go check it out and go get a little taste of Die Hard Bowl Club and what it's all about. Go go definitely check it out. It's a lot of fun. And um, Tony, thank you so much, dude. It's a pleasure talking with you. And uh, let's uh, let's do it again soon. Yes, sir. Bolt up, baby. Let's go. Well, Mr. Francis, can I call you Tony? Thank you <laughs> uh, for stopping by and chatting with my man, Kev Hug and Doug. And I know I always refer to you as Anthony Tony Francis, but I'll, I'm going to do my best to just say Tony Francis yeah. going forward. And he's he's next level ass Bolt fam. He's asked some really good stuff. He oh, He's the yeah. one that he brought. He made Kyle basically say he's our, he's everyone's coach. No. Yeah. Like he's in charge of everything. He so accepted I, that thought. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm, I appreciate you for doing that for us. Uh, I'm, uh, Tony, I appreciate you. Bro. Absolutely. Yes. And uh, love, love the history and the story of uh, becoming a Charger fan and uh, that the draft party sounds like a lot of fun over at uh, Dave and Buster's. I wish yeah. I could be there uh, to enjoy some of that, but please folks go check it out. Die Hard Ball Club. Can't think of a better fan base to uh, to hang out with, especially during a draft party like that. And oh yeah, oh, how exciting is it going to be I, for that I, fifth round pick? Baby? I, I can't wait, man. You're Just hang it. Doing these fan focuses, man, it's different this year. Like the energy level is fu- is yeah. getting up there, and like I don't know, I'm excited. I'm excited. Yeah. I'm super excited. So, well, again, thank you, Tony, for sitting down with my man Kev Hug and Duggan. Uh, but now, folks, it's time to go on to the next segment. Ask Bolt Fam. <laughs> time to put your money where your mouth is. <laughs> Hi, guys. Don't jam a thumb up his butt. Oh, that's what you do. <laughs> I wet myself in excitement. Oh, so hungry. Your thoughts are like totally appreciated. <laughs> Catch you later, dude. Okay, love you, boy. That's right, folks. Time for Ask Bolt Fam. And we start at the top with the K-Man. Who asked the question? Right now, with essentially one month left until the draft... Do your three guts feel Hortiz and company will take a trade down if the offer shows up? Or do you feel they will grab the best athlete available at number five, regardless of offers? Thanks for answering my question. I love you all. I love you too, K-Man. Love you. Love you. <laughs> Uh, well, I feel like this is a question that's going to come up multiple times between now and... And this is this is a question that can get you yelled at. So I've seen a lot of this on, oh, on yeah. X now where it's like, if you don't stay put and take a wide receiver, you're dead to me kind of energy. Oh, sure. Um, and if you have any semblance of trading back for anything, oh, yeah, you're a P- POS and no one should trust what you have to say. <laughs> it's really, it's gotten that divisive. Which uh, I, I get the I get that sentiment because it feels like really it, it feels like such an opportunity to have the number five pick. Yeah. And when you need when you don't need a quarterback, that's your opportunity to pick just the best freaking guy on the board. You want a weapon, and especially now after the narrative of losing Keenan Allen and, and Mike Williams, it's like, okay. The best guy sitting right there that's not a quarterback. Are you going to pull the trigger? Are you going to take him? And it's like, I want to, but <laughs> yeah. I also need some other guys. Yeah. Um, yeah. It, I, it's hard. It's hard because five, the way they're talking about it now, four quarterbacks, if Marvin Harrison Jr. is there, there's two things. One, you take him and he's pro bowl wide receiver. And you just basically, he, he basically has the short route quickness and that kind of stuff that Keenan has in a level of that. And then he's also got the high point stuff that Mike Williams did. He's like this mm-hmm. weird hybrid of those two. He's not going to replace them by any means, but he's 
Pro Bowl caliber um, wide receiver right off the bat. So right. it's hard. Dude. It's hard to to not do that. And people are saying or neighbors there. Like neighbors is not quite as polished and refined and ready to go. And if we're mm-hmm. trying to win pretty quick, I think um, MHA is a better option. I just I'm listening to what the coaches are saying and they're and like what coach said in his, his press conference, not his press conference, but his sit down interview today. And there's still more little nuggets you can gain where he even brought up yet again, the importance of the offensive line and how the offensive line doesn't rely on anyone. Right. Everyone relies on the offensive line. He's just, I don't, I don't know him well enough yet because I haven't had a season with him to understand what he's trying to say. Um, but there's something that feels like with the way he's set up that he knows all these players in college, he's going to f- be able to find what he needs in the draft. If he just has enough picks, he's going to be able to pick all the right guys is the feeling I get. So do I want one amazing wide receiver or do I want possibly two or three really great players that are going to have an immediate impact? Mm-hmm. That's where I don't think we're one wide receiver away from winning everything, but three top notch guys in the first, you know, two rounds, it's hard to argue that if they're going to be guys that contribute right away. Mm-hmm. So my my initial instinct is to be like, trade back, get more picks. Right. That's my initial instinct. But then you look at Marvin Harrison Jr. and you're like, oh shit, like this wide receiver doesn't come around very often. Right. It's very rare. So... <laughs> It's I'm I'm I don't envy the deci- who makes the decision because oh no yeah if you don't take a wide receiver most of the fan base is going to be pissed um, if you trade back there's going to be a handful of guys fans or whatever that are going to like it and you're going to get a whole bunch of players but you're probably going to alienate yourself a little bit if you don't draft a wide receiver well you're damned if you do and damned if you don't exactly that's the thing that's it's the like, setup you can't make everybody happy um, it, the the best thing is like no matter what happens. I'm going to be really happy with what happens, whether that means they get more draft capital or whether that means they pick the best player on the board. I'm going to be really happy with what happens on that day. Cause really the thing is it's a new coach, it's a new system, new, new mentality, new everything. And the, and the main thing is a new identity and in building a new identity, you can't do all of that in free agency. And especially with a roster that we're losing as many guys as we are right now, a lot of key players, the compensatory picks next year are going to be massive, but <laughs> that's for next year. That For yeah. now, you got to build that, I did that team with what you can. And right now, getting as much draft capital as you can makes the most sense. Now, can that be had in other ways with Uh, either trading other players or potentially trading other spots to move up higher. You know, there's a multitude of ways that you can do that. But really the most enticing way right now is having that number five pick, knowing that there's a very good chance that four quarterbacks are going to go in front. And then you you just are like given the keys to the city because somebody wants that number five pick so bad. Yeah. Well, and I, I, I kind of feel in my heart that if, Marvin Harrison Jr. is there. You take him. Yeah. If he's not there, you trade back. Yeah. That's how I feel. That's how I feel about it. Yeah. Everyone lo- really likes Malik Neighbors. Malik Neighbors is a unique, very unique wide, rec- wide receiver. I just don't think he's at the level um, that Marvin Harrison Jr. is. Mm-hmm. So, like, I at, in that situation, it's an easier break for me to trade back and get some more. Get to, you know, the, the ideal spot is the Vikings where you can trade back to 11. Take 11. They're 23 possibly second or third rounder. And dude, you're immediately picking players that are going to come in and that are going to fit with impact. They're going to fit with what you want to do. Exactly. You know, on a reasonable amount. Um, So it's a weird year. This is a weird draft year, man. Yeah. I'm excited for it to see what happens. It can't get here any sooner. Uh, But the K man, thank you buddy for asking the question. Uh, Let's move it on now to Al. Who asked the question? Hi. (laughs) Fellas, hope your feelings are healing after the K-13 trade. Would you guys be mad if we traded back and picked up Brock Bowers and a wide receiver or JPJ at 23? (laughs) I know it's hard to pass on the top two wide receivers, but hey, I'm all for it. Up to Minnesota, of course. Can't let me buy. Also, FTR, FTB, and FTC. This is a dangerous one. But I feel like this is certified fresh. I, uh, yeah. I feel shoot like your it. shot, dude. Yeah. <laughs> call me, call me Al. Um, 
so, I mean, we, we did kind of just talk about this, but that's the other interesting thing is trading back. And I mean, we've been talking about getting linemen. We've been talking about uh, cornerbacks uh, and Brock Bowers has certainly been a talk, but you also are now coming out of a free agency where you just drafted or not drafted, but you picked up two free agent tight ends, but they're not qu- what Brock ba- Brock Bowers is a weird freak who is a tight end, but is also a wide receiver. Sure. So it kind of two birds with one stone. And if you look at what Harbaugh does, it's tight end base. That's what his offenses packs passing attacks are. Mm-hmm. That's really everything's jammed in there and you're getting routes based on off that those kind of sets. Mm-hmm. So I there's a part of me that feels a little more excited for what he just said, where you tr- trade back, maybe get Bowers and get a tackle or something like that mm-hmm. be, would be my choice. And then wide receiver in the second round or cornerback, something like that. Um, if you don't end up using that five pick. It will be, it's an enticing deal. And yeah, I mean, that's the thing is the other thing I'm hearing now, I don't know the answer to the, or, you know, I don't know this. I don't watch a lot of college football. I don't, uh, you know, break down wide receivers and their abilities. But the word on the street is this is a pretty deep wide receiver class yeah. uh, going into this draft. So even if you're not getting the top two or three wide receivers, there's still a lot of talent in that wide receiver pool going into this draft. Now, are they going to be as impactful as those other three guys? Probably not. But will they serve the needs of the team and the and the identity of what that team is trying to build? Maybe. Yeah, possibly. Maybe. Only time will tell. <laughs> but uh, yeah, Al, thanks for coming on the show. Thanks, thanks for asking the question. Appreciate it. Uh, let's move it on now to Manuelito Pedito. Let's go. Ask the question. <laughs> Shut up. Party peeps, men Willie P up in this B. I have two questions for y'all. One important, the other just for fun. First, with Coach Harbaugh living in the RV for the moment, where do you think he empties his shitter? I imagine he's out in the street, Cousin Eddie style, <laughs> dumping it into a storm sewer, wearing nothing but a robe, trooper hat, and some hiking boots while smoking a cigar and drinking a beer. Or, since he's by the beach, he's kind enough to feed the fishes and dumps it in the ocean? Oh, I bet those fishes eating that protein become better swimmers. Jesus. Or does he just take it to where all the other shit goes? Allegiant Stadium. <laughs> now for the fun question. In the draft, how would you guys feel about this? We trade down with the Vikings, get J.C. Latham in the 11th pick, Jackson Powers Johnson in the 23rd pick, Kool-Aid McKinsey in the second round, and Joel Lynn Polk in the third. I may be in the minority in this, but I think it's really important to build a strong wall in the first round to create a giant, a great run play, and also give the herpster a chance to become a statue and comfortably scan the field instead of him constantly being chased around, uh, seeing our fifth pick receiver get double cover. What you think? Y'all with me? Or what would you like to see go down in the first? All right, guys, like always, much love, high fives, and tight hugs. Pedito out. This kind of aligns with what I was thinking. Um, I would switch out for me, uh, uh, Talisi, uh, sorry, Talise Fuaga for JC Latham. I'd flip flop those. Um, mm-hmm. I love Fuaga is just a mean, mean man. And I think yeah. um, we, we did a full breakdown of it on our Patreon and he's just a mean dude and he's incredibly yeah. quick and finishes he, the amount of times he drove people into the ground while blocking them was unparalleled with any mm-hmm. of the other guys, including yeah. JC Latham. So um, just the wow factor that alone and kind of his grit, I would go with that. But other than that, this feels like why you would do it. Like you you could get your center, you could get a, so you basically your entire offensive line would be first round picks. Mm-hmm. It would be your first round picks. You get your You get your right tackle and you get your center and then you're figuring out who your right guard is. I protect Justin. That's all I've been saying it forever. You're only as good as Justin's going to, where he's going to carry us. You make him safe. Everything is going to be okay. It really will. Right. Yeah. I, I can't argue with that. And, uh, you know, it, it does make sense, you know, giving him a chance to, to make his reads as opposed to having the number one guy being double covered, probably on just about every play. Uh, Seems like a lot, a little bit better. 
Don't hate me for saying that. I just I put, protect Justin. <laughs> just protect Justin, man. I, it's hard. Like if you actually think about it, it's not that bad of a plan is to protect our best player. Right. Right. We'd love to get him a super weapon, but I also want to protect the shit out of him. I want him to be a safe little baby in a bassinet that never gets right. touched and gets rocked to sleep. Yeah. Um, has no worries. Yeah. I feel like if the word on the street was that this is a deep offensive line class, then I might be like, okay, makes sense. You know, yeah. if, if it was a shallow wide receiver class and you're like, hey, man, we just lost Keenan Allen, Mike Williams, these three guys, there's such a huge disparity between them and the next wide receiver, you know, group, then I'd be like, all right, that makes sense. Go, go for those wide receivers. But I you're going to feel I, like you're going to get some solid guys in those round two, three, four. I really do. I really do. And if you trade back out of that, you're going to get a lot more of what you need to help make Justin successful. You know right. what I mean? I really feel that. So Manuelito Pedito, thank you for asking the question. I do picture Jim Harbaugh wearing that outfit and saying, shit, it's full. <laughs> <laughs> or he just has, uh, what's his nickname? Um, Rome, what does he call him? Hold on. Oh, G Rome. G Rome. Or yeah. he has G Rome come over and take care of it for him. <laughs> He's just like, God damn it. Why did I do sign up for this shit? This is why I park 100 feet away from you, <laughs> yeah. Jim. Yeah. Your shits are explosive. Shit. Those, ex the, those, those shits attack with the, the those shits attack with the ferocity unseen to, ma uh, mankind. to mankind. Yeah. All right. Manuelito Pedito, thank you for asking the question. Let's move it on now to DJ Jones, who asked the question. Howdy, y'all! With the recent signings that our bolts have made, what are the three most important position groups you guys would say holds priority in the draft? And out of the three wide receivers, Harrison Jr., Neighbors, and Odunze, who do y'all like better? K love you, bye, BTFU, and FTR. For me, I think it's Harrison Jr. And I think it's what's interesting is like, it's not just like offensive minds and how they want to use the player. I think utilize the fact that we have Jesse Minter and look at what he said in the past when they were preparing for Ohio State. And he basically said, he's a generational wide receiver. We had to throw our game plan out, you know, out the window and just lock him down. Otherwise, he'd take over the game. Mm. So when the guys that have to prepare for you are saying this stuff, it's not just like, oh, that'd be a nice shiny tool I can use in my, in my toolbox. It's like, this guy's a pain in the ass. Mm -hmm. This guy's a real pain in the ass. And that's what, that's what Marvin Harrison Jr. is. I like, I like uh, Malik neighbors. He's a, he's a little more raw. He doesn't quite have the full tool kit that, you know, Harrison has. Um, and then Roman Dunze, they said the very similar thing about uh, Roman Dunze and Marvin Harrison Jr. It was like, well, you have to take him away. Mm -hmm. Like, he, you have to stop Roman Dunze because that, that's what they did in, in the national championship game and they won. So I think go and we've there's been some sleuthing going on online about looking back in old interviews and like what the these coaches have said about them but i think that's some some place to start in terms of where this staff might lean um and based on what i've what i've seen the two quotes from Jesse Minter it would be Marvin Harrison Jr and Roma Dunze is what mm. my just based on what i read mm -hmm. you know that's more than i could say yeah so very good. And then uh, what are the three most important position groups you guys would say holds priority in the draft? I'm going wide receiver, offensive line, and it's split between, yeah, and probably corner. I think those are the those are the three. We just added one, but he's not a for sure thing. So I think mm -hmm. you want to bring in competition to fill that room up and give you some help. But you also want to address the defensive, you want to address the trenches. So I think those are the three with a very close interior defensive lineman. Um, but you can't do that unless you have a lot of picks. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's kind of where I was. <laughs> I keep like talking myself into something I already want. It's just right. stupid. And, and it's a, Carousel. <laughs> yeah, I would say I would say offensive line, you know, more so for, you know, getting guys that are going to be around after this upcoming season. More and than playing anything. the style, too, that Coach right? wants. Playing the style that he wants. Um, I feel like linebacker is also an area. I mean, we've got two guys now. <laughs> I yeah. think we need more than two. Yeah. Um, and then, uh, and I would probably, I'd probably say, 
Yeah, interior defensive lineman as well. Um, after knowing that Austin Johnson's not going to be here anymore, I know he just got Puna Ford, but he's going to need some help as well. He's going to yeah. need a little bit more. Yeah, we need rotation. to fill out these rooms a little bit. <laughs> yeah. So I would say that that's probably a fair assessment there. So there you go. DJ Jones, thank you for asking the question. Let's move it on now to Daryl21, who asked the question. Oh, hey, guys. Oh, how's my peeps? Since I'm over the hole, he said, she said, he said, regarding our Slayer Keenan, I wanted to throw out a simple question. Oh, you're the NFL scheduling committee, and you have two teams in mind to pair the charges. First game up against oh who comes from who comes to mind all right number one i could see the nfl going full-blown popcorn heavy and throwing us in the kc for their thursday opener two hosting a baltimore as the harbor bros go at it on sunday night opener what say you guys say you tuesday oh okay love you bye Kyle made a great point on these where he basically said these are too big not to have time to like promote them, you know, just in in terms of Mm. promoting games. Sure. I I feel like you might be prematurely doing one of these two if you do it week one a little bit. I'd love to see it. You come out of the gate swinging. But just the fact that the NFL is being played again is enough excitement for football fans. Sure. So I think I think these are probably going to be a little little later. But I for me, if if these were the options, I would I would like to beat the shit out of the former world champions. Mm-hmm. That would be freaking rad. What if with our what new if? offense, new defense, they have no idea what's coming. Yeah. Pound them in the mouth, beat them up. Yeah. Let me pose this. Why not both? Play them both the same night? No. So if we play Kansas City, it would be their home opener. Mm-hmm. And then our home opener would be Sunday night. Back to back teams that made it to the their respective division championships they both have their own storylines to talk about you got afc west uh, opponents going up against the previous super bowl champs and then sunday night prime time for the chargers home opener dude that would be the meanest schedule anybody could ever lay upon us those two juggernauts back to back to start the season but they don't know what's coming we're gonna (laughs) rope a dope sneak attack (laughs) We're gonna we're gonna be swinging with our left and jabbing with our right. I feel like I smoke feel like, screen, <laughs> smoke screen, wild card. <laughs> I feel like this Baltimore game is gonna be like Week Twelve Monday Night Football or something like that. It's like it could be. It's gonna get its own valuable time slot. Really, I it, I guarantee it'll be a Monday Night game. I'll put my money put my money where my mouth is. It's a Monday Night Football game. Okay, I I could see it going either way. I could honestly see the Baltimore game. That that prime time that that's the thing we're due for a prime time home opener, man. I I like that idea because all of our previous home openers, at least in the past few years, at least at so far, yeah, have been just regular you know daytime games. But a prime time night game home opener in SoFi with Jim Harbaugh as the new coach. I mean, come on! I know that sounds so, really cool. I need this in my life. That would be awesome. Um, we'll find out what happens there. I'm up for both. Uh, but if I had to pick one, I would I would pick the Baltimore Sunday night opener. That would be a hoot and a holler. Uh, Daryl, 21. Thank you for asking the question. Let's move it on now to Jim Harbaugh's burner account. Who asked the question? Well, now, what's good, motherfuckers? It's me, <laughs> Colonel Harlan Sanders, the guy from KFC. So ready for the weekly ass kickings we're going to be giving out. How many weeks do you think it will take for teams to start fearing us? We haven't had this since the Marty days. Bolt up, man. That's a good question. How many until... Because we're not feared yet. We just have an amazing coach, and we're still the same old Chargers until we're not the same old Chargers, right? I don't know, man. Right now, everybody's talking about Jim Harbaugh and that he's back in the NFL. They're already... People are already, like, posting clips of his interviews. He brings an excitement level to this team. So there's already... I'm not saying people are fearing us just yet, but there is a known well, knowledge of his presence the, that's enough to make people go, ooh, Jim's well, back. <laughs> at least the fans and the media are. Yes. I think teams, you're going to have to prove it. Yeah, that so makes I, sense. So I think a couple weeks in, if we can go 3-0 and and we're like just 
just like destroying people. I think Mm -hmm. it needs to be a once it's yeah, three times. Give me three. Utah, give me three. And then on the fourth game, whoever that is, poor bastards. You know what I mean? Three and oh, poor (laughs) bastards. Oh man, you know, you just mentioning the the three and oh now makes me think about, yeah, okay, three and oh, but three and oh, are are we winning by like three points or are we winning by double digit multiple touchdowns? I think what people are going to be worried about is how dominant our defense is going to be. Yeah. And then when our defense is dominant and we're controlling the game, the whole yeah. game, uh-huh. Justin's going to have great field position. And he's just going to get easy touchdowns. We're going to yeah. run the ball, hit you in the face, and we're going to get easy touchdowns. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love your enthusiasm. That's what I mean, man. I mean, it, it's been... It's been years of just barely eking out wins or just barely losing and there's a whole new mentality and a whole new identity with this team that I feel like, yeah, this is going to be something special coming up here pretty soon. And I really, I'm hoping my fingers are crossed and I'm hoping nobody's got it better than us. (laughs) (laughs) But uh, I think three is a good number there for, for teams to start fearing us. So there you go. Our defense is going to be a pain in your ass. I'll just tell you that right now. Please be go for it. (laughs) Uh, Jim Harbaugh's burner account. Thank you for asking the question. And we go out of ask bold fam with a fear. Kadir, a fear who asked the question. Judge and Chad. Love you. My boys, baby coach. This question's for you only. I am completely lost and confused, baby. I heard that Chargers team identity will be like three or four weeks into the regular season, baby. But we have OTA training camps and mini camps. That is how you build a team identity, baby. As coach, not wait till the regular season, please, baby. If you love me, please explain to me how it works. Also, Wooldog, my baby, and Kevin, you can add if you wish after the coach. My coach, Kyle, must go first. Love you, my boys. F*** the AFC West. Let's go. B- Bolts hard about 13 for first year, baby. Athir, this is Kyle. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting question this week. I strongly disagree with everything you said. What? All right, let me kick it to Kevin. Wow, Kyle, it's pretty intense. I don't know why you did that uh, theory. He's really he's a reliable guy, and he gives us great questions every week. So I don't know why you want to start some shit with them. But um, yeah, thoughts. Go ahead, Adam. Well, yeah, since uh, Kyle gave his thoughts already. <laughs> Um, yeah, no, building a team identity, you've got an entire off season now, At April 2nd, these guys are already going to start showing up and either buying into uh, what they are selling or y- you're, you're not, you're, you're not in, you're not all in, you're not this bought is, in. That's what Harbaugh does, dude. That's, that's yeah. his sole motivation is to get people on the same page, get the identity going. It's going to be done in the first month. And then they, they're just going to chisel away and chip away at it is what he, what he said. Yeah. So I, I, I'm not worried about, I'm not worried about it. It cannot get any worse than what we had previously. And it's only going to get better. And I think it's going to get better immediately. Immediately. And that's the thing. I, I feel like maybe what they're referring to if there is we won't know or really have a understanding of the identity until week three or four, because then we're, that's really the only time we're going to see these guys playing. Like the team is going to be working on their identity. Sure. The players are going to know what their identity is or what their game plan is, but we as fans and and people watching the games, we're not really going to have a complete understanding of what it's going to be. Now we can, base it off of what they've said where you know they want to you know they're coming down they're going to hit guys in the mouth play some dirty rough and tough football and we're just going to be the strongest team out there but until we see that through three to four weeks it's going to be hard for us to really put our finger on like oh yeah that's it i think there's there's one thing you can look at first game we haven't had an identity and it shows up at the worst possible times and the worst possible times at the end of games. Mm. Cause we take our foot off the gas. We don't have that killer right. finish the game mentality. Yes. Week one, I think we'll know pretty damn quick if we're going to have that killer mentality at the end of a game. Mm-hmm. Do we finish hard, finish strong and don't give them a chance or, you know, w- what do we look like? And I think that's where you're going to see immediately the difference between what we've been in the past and what we're going to be in the future. And I think you'll know right away. I think you will. 
Yeah. Personally, I think so. Yeah. So uh, there you go, Athir. Thanks for letting me and Kevin be a part of this. <laughs> sorry, sorry, Kyle said that about you, Athir. I don't know. I am too. I don't boy. know where. I, he was really out of, uh, really out of line. My yeah, thing, but. he must have had a rough night. Yeah, it sounds like it. Sorry. But uh, Athir, so sorry. <laughs> thank you for asking the question. And thank you, everybody, for asking questions and Ask Bull Fam. We greatly appreciate it. Uh, it's uh, it's an uh, it's always an odd episode when we don't have our our Kyle sweet coach baby Duggan, boy, sweet baby boy to <laughs> you know help you know <laughs> help us not constantly agree with each other. <laughs> yeah, but hey, it's just one of those episodes, and it's the off season for crying out loud. Let's have some fun for Pete's sake. Let's do it. So, all right. Well, I think that's going to do it for this episode of Charger Chat. Any final thoughts there, Kevin? Uh, I think you did a great job today, Adam. You really uh, carried the show, and I'm uh, glad to ride those coattails. <laughs> well, I couldn't have done it without this amazing outline that you clearly spent a ton of time going through and setting me up to make me look stop. so awesome. Stop. I wouldn't look as awesome if it were for you there, oh, big guy. Stop. Just take the compliment. I did. Okay. But I brought you with me. All right. You were coattails. <laughs> <laughs> All right, folks. Well, that's going to do it for this episode of Charger Chat. Don't forget to bolt up because we're ready for any squad, any place. Okay, love you. Bye. Okay, love you. Bye. And now a word from our sponsors. This is the true story of a modern miracle. The miracle of a man that showed so much promise, but was struggling, injured, and losing hope. This man grew into a leader and is around even today, beloved and respected throughout the world. His name is Joey Bosa. This is his story, and the story of the man who gave him a chance. Starring Jeremy Allen White as Joey Bosa, and Bill Burr as Ben Herbert. The Miracle Worker, rated PG-13.